Hey guys, so today's going to be Don't Be Afraid of the Dark review. This was requested and I thought, you know, that's an easy one for me to talk about because I've seen it twice. I saw it in theaters and I recently rewatched it so I didn't have to rewatch it again today. So it was just a convenient one for me to talk about. Now, this movie, I thought, when I saw the previews, I thought I would be really scared. I was like, yes, finally another haunted house movie so excited and then I saw it and I, I laughed at it like honestly this is not even a, considered a horror movie um, I wouldn't say that it's a horror movie I'm reviewing it anyway because it's meant to be it's supposed to be horror but if you're looking to be scared definitely don't watch this movie yeah there's some creepy aspects of it but once you see the monsters whatever they're supposed to be the creatures in the house you'll laugh and it's like it's not even scary anymore then it's just like a thriller kind of where you're just watching it to be entertained it's not anything to be scared of trust me um there are some like gorier moments i guess you would say i guess that's why it's rated r um but honestly it's not it's not scary um so don't expect much when you watch it now it is on netflix so i definitely recommend watching it it's but just expect not to be scared i liked the movie and it's actually one of those movies where I get cravings to watch. Um, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe I'll go into it in another video on ones that I just get cravings to watch. Like sometimes I'll just be like, man, I really want to watch Jennifer's Body. And I don't know why. It's not even that great. It is one of my guilty pleasure movies. Um, same thing with Haunting of Molly Hartley. Don't be afraid of the dark. I just have weird cravings where I just really desperately want to watch it and it, it's not like I really liked it the first time. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'm just weird. Anyway, moving on with the movie. Um, it was written, well there's a few writers, but one of the writers was Guillermo del Toro who did Pan's Labyrinth. He's a Spanish director, normally. He wasn't the director in this one. He was actually the writer, so it has a creepy aspect of his that he likes to do. You know, his creatures are always weird, and um, it was good in, in that sense. I wish they had given him more directing power, because I feel like it would have been a lot better if it were directed by him, because I love Pan's Labyrinth. It's definitely one of the best movies ever, and um, so I was excited when I saw that he was working on this one, and it is a remake. I haven't seen the original or anything. I don't know, maybe this ruined it. I thought it was funny. Um, almost like a joke. <laughs> it has Guy Pierce and Katie Holmes in it are the two main actors and the little girl Bailey Madison or I think that's her name. I could have totally just got that wrong. Um, the little girl is um, not a bad actress but she's not the best. It could be an age thing. I don't know. Katie Holmes is actually pretty good in it. I liked her part. I liked her casting. She was fine. Guy Pierce was good. Um, the acting was okay. Um, it wasn't the best. I feel like I'm saying um a lot. I'm sorry. It wasn't the best acting, but it's still pretty good. Um, you, see, I just said um again. Wow, I need to stop. It's not traumatizing bad acting or anything. It's okay, but don't expect a, you know, Emmy or anything coming out of this movie. Um, it was made in 2010, so it's a little bit older. Pepe is moving the tripod right now, so the camera shaking that's why anyway I feel like I'm all over the place in this video like I always am I'm always rambly and just talking so I am going to talk a little bit about the plot um, the girl is sent to visit her estranged father who doesn't really get along with her he's kind of a distant figure in her life and he has a new girlfriend Kim who is played by Katie Holmes and she's an interior designer and so Guy Pierce and Katie Holmes buy this house I oh his name is Alex so Alex and Kim are the father and father's girlfriend they buy this house that used to be an old painters and he mysteriously disappeared and um, so they decided to buy it and revamp it to sell it so they were just gonna redesign everything so that's why he has his interior designer girlfriend to help him on the project and the little girl comes to visit to live with them I don't know if it's like a permanent thing that's not really important she's just there she doesn't really get along with uh, Kim at first but she kind of gets there 
and these little creature things kind of sabotage her willingness to befriend Kim. Long story if that doesn't make sense, but they're like sabotaging everything and trying to make her life miserable. The thing about these little creature things is that they want her to be with them, like come back to the basement with them or something. I'm not sure, this is where I get confused. I'm not sure if it's to eat her or to have them be one of them because in the description, just to refresh my memory, I read the description again and it said that the creatures wanted Sally, who's a little girl, to come back with them to be one of them. But in the beginning of the movie, you see the little creature things saying child's teeth or children's teeth or something. They feed on teeth. That's what they live on. It's disgusting. <laughs> I have a huge teeth phobia in movies, so like watching Old Boy killed me. And apparently Human Centipede 2, there's a scene worse than Old Boy, which I don't even want to bother watching that scene because I have a teeth thing. I don't know. My teeth are ripped out. I don't know, it's really gross. I will say that the beginning of this movie is really good. I loved the scene with the painter and the maid. I That was the first scene that I saw, obviously, in the theater, and I was so excited for the movie. I was like, this is amazing. I was hoping the creatures would be just some, like, thing lurking in the basement and not, you wouldn't actually see them. I think sometimes that's scarier to not see the creature you know, fear of the unknown. We don't know what it looks like, how horrific it really is. It eats teeth to survive. I mean, that's just weird and creepy. So I was hoping they wouldn't show them and they did. It was honestly ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. They're like these little small, weird little alien thing. I don't, I don't know. It has a creepy factor. And yes, the first scene is definitely scary. It scared me because the teeth thing just bothers me. But, I don't know, I give it a B. A B for everything combined. Um, I really want to watch the original now that I know that it's a remake. And um, I want to see what they did to it. And what, what they changed, what they didn't change. That whole thing. I'm kind of interested in watching that. I don't know what year the first one was made. I don't know. Um, but definitely watch it if you're bored one day. It is an entertaining movie. And it's definite... Okay, I'm going to say this. It's really good for those who don't like being scared but want to start watching scary movies. It's a good transition movie because it's not overly scary and it's not overly disturbing or anything, but it's just enough where it's it could scare those who are squeamish or sensitive or afraid of little creature things. I don't know. Um, if you don't find that ridiculous, then it's a good movie to watch um, if you're a newbie to horror movies. I definitely recommend this movie. It's really good. Somebody had actually requested that I do a whole video on movies to warm up to horror movies. So kind of the movies where you watch as you're trying to get more into horror. Um, so I might do that uh, on my own personal beliefs on which ones are good for that, or good for newbie horror fans. Um, but honestly, you just got to get right into it. That's my belief. I started with, the well, The Ring is the first one that really got me into it. After that, it was all downhill. I just watched everything. But anyway, we don't need to go into the past of my history. I have a whole video on my history of horror. Um, so if you want to watch that, it's on my channel. I also had requests to do Saw, the Saw franchise series. Um, I may... What I'm planning on with that, I'd love to watch them all and then do one video on it. I don't want to do Saw 1 video and then Saw 2 video the next week and just do a whole like 8 week series of Saw. I feel like that's a little much so I'm feeling maybe I'll do like Saw 1 and 2 one day, do the videos and just do a compilation and I'll just work on it for a few weeks or months or however long and then when I finally get all the videos done I'll just compile it all into one so you can just watch my thoughts on all of them in one video. Let me know how you want me to do that. If you want separate videos for all of them, I will do that. It's all up to you guys since you guys are the ones watching them. You just let me know what you prefer if you like the one video or separate videos. Okay, so that's all I have to talk about. Don't be afraid of the dark. I would recommend it for sure for entertainment purposes. Scare factor, not really. Scariness, it's like a C minus. <laughs> I 
I'd say. Um, it's not that bad. So I would definitely watch it if you're not in the mood to be really, really scared. But you still want to watch like a creepy movie that's really good. I would recommend it for that, for sure. So let me know what your thoughts are on this movie if you've seen it in the comments. Um, make sure you leave requests down below for future videos you want me to do and all that jazz. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next week. Bye.